okay, you went to the hearing, they found out that nothing was wrong, they agree with you, and everything's dismissed, and you're fine. Or they find out that something is wrong, and you did something wrong, and you need to be chastened and disciplined. The commissioners are the ones that are going to decide what's going to happen to you, not the staff at the division, not the investigators, it's the commission. Remember those five people, you know, four of which are real estate licensees, probably your competitors or friends in the business. Hey, this is a really good thing because those four commissioners on the five, those people are people that are actually in the business. You know, they've seen a lot of things. They've heard about a lot of things. Uh, they may have even done a few things. So, you, you know, you're, you're talking about people that are actually been out there on the streets and are making it work. Uh, this is a great thing because you're being judged by a knowledgeable quorum of your peers. Remember, three out of five is what it's going to be. So if they're going to discipline you, they could fine you, and that money goes into the real estate recovery fund, and the fines could be high. Used to be in our state, we had a limit on those fines, but they took that off a few years ago. And you can see from disciplinary sanctions at the division that some of these fines could run quite a bit of money. Ten, five, seven, thousand dollars I saw one fine was over $20,000. Fines can be extensive, depending on how severe your activities were. If you're ever curious and want to attend some of these hearings, you can do that. As a matter of fact, if you sign in and let the people at the division know you're there to attend the hearings or the commission meeting and then the hearings afterwards, you'll actually get some CE credit for it. But you'll also see how fair they are. And they are fair. But understand that there are rules and there are laws as well. And if you did some dastardly deed, you're going to be called on the carpet for it. Now, in addition to fining you, they could suspend you for a while. What can you do when you're suspended? Nothing, as far as real estate goes, as real estate licensing activity goes. I mean, you can't do anything. They could revoke you. If they revoke you, then you cannot get another license for five years. So, fine you, suspend you, revoke you. They could also require you to go back to real estate school or take some CE credit classes so that you're a smarter individual and won't do these heinous crimes. What they cannot do to you is put you in jail. They could recommend to the county attorney or even the AG's office that they pursue you on another type of charge, criminal charges, for example. And then, of course, when you're in front of a real judge, then you could be put in jail. Every broker in the state of Utah must maintain a trust account. The trust account is where they deposit monies that belong to other people. Do they always have to use their trust account? No. There are a couple of exceptions. One of them is if, for example, the buyer decides that they want to put their money into an interest-bearing account. Well, then they have to put it into a separate interest-bearing trust account. So it's not their normal trust account. It's a special trust account that they set up. There are some cases where brokers have in the fine print of their listing contract that they allow the money to be put into a interest-bearing trust account on a regular basis, and then the interest is harvested out of that account and then given to a housing-type charity. The one that's normally used in our state is URHOF, which is a charity that's pretty much run by the Utah Association of Realtors. So that is a possibility that they don't use a regular trust account, but they use a special interest-bearing account. It could also be a situation where the buyer or seller has requested that the money be put into, for example, a title company uh, rather than the broker's trust account. And we're seeing more and more sellers insisting on this, particularly on REO-type properties where they want the earnest money of the buyer put into a title company's trust account. Well, that's fine. But all this has to be contractual. There has to be an addendum that states if the money is going into an interest-bearing account or if the money is going into a totally separate account that's not controlled by the broker. Years ago, I did a lot of work for a, a syndicator out of California, and I sold them lots and lots of properties in Colorado. And when we did larger earnest monies, like fifty or $60,000, and this is going back in the late 70s, he always insisted that we use a trust account at a title company, not my Rick Roller trust account. And that was fine with me. I mean, 
he understood that this was monies that were actually coming from his investors. He was a syndicator. And so there were limited partnership monies. As a general partner, he was tasked at making sure they were kept safe. And so although he knew me and trusted me, he also knew that trust accounts, brokerage trust accounts, really are nothing more than checking accounts that have been designated as trust accounts. But it's still my account. You know, if I'm having a bad hair day and decide that maybe running a bait shop in Belize would be a better activity for me to do than selling real estate, I could take his $50,000 and hightail it for the border. Better to put it in some state-regulated title company account where those funds are underwritten, per se, and the activities of that company are underwritten by a national title insurance company. And so there's some validity there. So Uh, In fact, many states, uh, not all of them, but like the state of Montana, they have a provision in their law that real estate brokers don't have to have a trust account in Montana at all. You just designate which title company you want to use. So Utah's a little different in that all brokers have to have a trust account. Whether they use it or not is optional depending on the transaction. A lot of brokers are, some of the larger brokers in our state, are requiring all earnest monies to be put into a title company trust account so they don't have to administer it. But nevertheless, they're still responsible for it, but they figure the title company, they're good for it, or at least their national underwriter is. So something to think about there.